Okay, this is the final video in the construction series. Uh, in the prior two, we built the tension member uh, and then the complete uh, compression member um, component. And now we have to assemble this together. And this can be a little tricky. It's probably the most tricky part of the build. So I'll, I'll take some time to describe uh, what I'm doing and, and how I did it. Um, so for this piece, or for this, uh, part of the task, we're going to use this assembly uh, assembly jig here. Um, it's made out of a four by six block of wood. It has the actual bolt on it. Um, you know, I've, I've made, uh, you know, you want to make, take your time to make sure this is exactly, you know, 30 millimeters away from the wall. Um, and because this is a, this is a non bonus division C build, we're dealing with, um, the bolt and then the line that runs 15 centimeters below that line. So our boomy needs to be above that line, which means it needs to be a little bit shorter than 15 centimeters. So wh what I've done is, um, you know, my center line of the bolt to the bottom of this, uh, this um, block is actually 14.8 uh, centimeters. So I've given myself a two millimeter buffer um, just to account for any discrepancies or, or people don't draw the line on the actual testing wall uh, as accurately as they could. So also on this block, um, I've got a center line drawn, which is not part of the rules, but I do have the two lines, four centimeters on either side. So our boomy needs to touch only on the outside of that uh, uh, piece. So this this helps us align this um, during final assembly. So, and th this is nice to have this a solid piece of wood that um, you know you, you can you can push this up against and it's not going to move right out of the way. So right away you can see that because I made the jig of the compression member uh, uh, eight point four centimeters. There's a two centimeter or sorry, two millimeter buffer on either side. Again, just to account for if these lines aren't perfectly drawn, you, you always want to give yourself a little bit of design buffer uh, in case you run into uh, some issues during actual competition. Okay, so the process here is we're gonna have this in place um, and then we're gonna install this. So first uh, we have this in position, and like before, I like to use I, I like to use blue painter's tape to hold this down uh, so it doesn't move when we're uh, trying to put this uh, tension piece in place. So basically, we can tape that there. I also like to put one like in the middle of these two. pull it tight and then push it down and then adjust the block after the fact. So, so now it's there, but now we can adjust this to put it exactly in the center and touching both, both uh, compression beam uh, parts. Okay, so now that is in place and it's not gonna move, hopefully not too much. So the next piece, uh, next part of the process is we got to figure out how to attach this um, uh, to the compression member. So it is symmetric, so it doesn't matter which side you put on the top. This is going to go on that hook, on the wall joint there, bolt. And it is, you know, it's going to eventually, and you want to dry, dry fit this, it's going to go like this. And, and the, these tension pieces, should be able to touch the ground or touch the touch the uh, table there or the the tile, and so here's where it's nice having something like a tile, where we can rotate this whole thing and get a better view of what's going on. Um, and then as we hold this, I don't know if this is aligned for the camera or not. I'm not sure, but you if you pinch these together. It should be very symmetric, so it should be the same distance or close to the same distance here and here. 
So what I found is um, it's, it's very challenging to, to get this symmetric like this because there is, there is, it's bowing outwards and it's going to bow out even more when we glue these. Uh, to get it perfectly symmetric, uh, gluing one of these at a time. So I found it works best to try and do uh, both of them at the same time. So while that's a little more challenging, I found it just makes uh, more, um, more symmetric uh, results at the end. So one way I like to help with that, I'm gonna bring this back here. I do like to tape this up a little bit just so it doesn't, doesn't move. Uh, or not as much. Right. Okay, and ma make sure these are smooth. And then another thing I like to do is um, I like to mark at the on the tension stick itself, right at the interface of the beam on both sides. Okay, so what that's going to do is now as I lift this up, you can, we can see the marking there. Hopefully you can see the marking there and there. So the goal is to apply a film of glue along both of these inner edges and as quickly as possible, get them into position and then squeeze them together. And um, you only get one chance at that. And if it doesn't work out, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a problem because then, you know, if, if you try and rip that off, it's gonna it's gonna do damage, and that's a problem. So we have to try and do this correctly uh, the first time. And the way I like to do this is I will hold this up, like uh, with one hand, I guess almost like chopsticks. Even though I'm terrible with chopsticks, um, just hold them so this is still attached and not moving, and this is close to where it needs to be. And now I need to transfer this glue uh, quickly, and um, but enough glue to get the whole thing on there. So it's going to take three or four transfers and on each side, and we want to do that as fast as possible. So let's see if I can pull this off for the camera. Okay, now the glue is on there. Now we want to try and do this symmetrically and then squeeze it into place. And now we hold both of these on either side. You know, and th this is something that, you know, perhaps uh, a secondary 3D printed jig might be able to help with. Um, I haven't given that too much thought because I've done this method so much, uh, I've gotten used to it. But feel free to experiment with other ideas of how to um, maybe make something to help with this process. Um, because, yeah, it, it, is, it is tricky to get uh, correct the first time. So that's, that's pretty good. And this one, this one turned out pretty nicely. I don't know if we can see it. Um, it's pretty symmetric. So finally, the home stretch here, we, we just need to glue the, uh, the basswood helpers to the tension rod. Uh, these you can do one at a time. You just put that on there and, and hold these. And this is basswood to basswood, so we, we want to hold this for at least 10 to 15 seconds each. And don't worry about the ex excess length here. We're going to snip that off uh, in a minute.
if your fingers ever get stuck, just kind of roll them off instead of pulling them directly off. Got some glue on there. All right. Okay, now all we have to do is we carefully take our tape off our and again this should should not do any damage. This stuff is pretty magical. And with any luck this just comes right off. All right, one final thing uh, before I snip that. Because this tension to compression joint is super critical, I do like to reinforce that joint um, with a little bit of glue on, on the edges. So for both sides, I, I take our glue and just go and give it a little um, extra here to make this, you know, every little bit helps so it doesn't rip off of the compression piece and then you can reinforce it here as well this just guarantees that you have a, a good joint here and it won't um, the glue won't be the reason you're f it's going to fail Okay, and then the very final thing, I like to use just uh, like wire clippers here. You can clip the, uh, the excess basswood off if you're careful. And there, there is our completed uh, Division C non-bonus benchmark boomy. I hope this series of videos has helped you out and to see how I build it. This is exactly how I built my benchmark video or benchmark build. Um, and hopefully this will inspire you to come up with even better techniques and uh, good luck this season. And thanks for watching and feel free to reach out if you have any specific questions.